we understood that uh, we are currently talking about only on off keyed signals we are not talking about phase modulated signals now in an on off keyed signal all what is necessary is a direct detection receiver a receiver which will convert your input light into a current and the received uh, current is going to look like this and uh, the the fluctuations that you are seeing that is the noise that you are seeing you can quantify that and we said that, that there are two primary sources of noise one is the short noise and the other one is thermal noise and the way we quantify this noise is through the uh, is through the variance or the standard deviation uh, which tells the spread about the mean value and we discussed that thermal noise is because of the fact that you have random motion of electrons and short noise is because of the fact that the incoming photons there is some statistics associated with it which is actually a Poissonian statistics but if you remember uh, if, you, if you remember what we uh, actually characterized even for a short noise even though the statistics is Poissonian we actually assumed a Gaussian distribution so we are, we are approximating that this Poisson actually uh, is actually a Gaussian for in fact for large photon numbers the Poisson distribution actually becomes a Gaussian distribution so there is no this this whatever we are doing uh, is correct so long as your photon number is large large as in n greater than 100 which is what is the case in your communication system regular communication systems okay of course when you are talking about quantum systems this may change you may have to slightly reconsider how you are defining uh, your short noise okay now uh, so so we know what is a distribution and because these two are completely uncorrelated process which means that the variance in the electron or in the in the current uh, because of the randomness in electron motion and the variance in current because of the randomness in the arrival time they are nowhere related so the total noise you would always write as sigma square total is the sum of the variances because if i have two statistically independent process the the if the total is always the variance of the uh, resultant process is sum uh, sum of thermal noise square plus uh, sigma s square right so this is how we quantify and uh, we also did some calculations and we also said uh, what happens uh, in a practical case in a practical communication system we said that it is a thermal noise that dominates but i would like to have short noise limited system uh, the reason being fundamentally the reason is that I would like to operate in the quantum limited system if you have short noise limited system we derived that the SNR is eta times which is a quantum efficiency times the NP which is the number of photons this is where we stopped there is one more parameter that is uh, defined in a detector data sheet if you are trying to build a link and if you are looking at the data sheet of uh, detector um, one more parameter that tells you the uh, noise of the receiver uh, they may not give you the short noise or thermal noise or rl or something instead they will give you a number called as nep noise equivalent power and uh, this is mostly for those receivers which are limited by thermal noise not short noise limited system for thermal noise limited system nep is uh, power per unit bandwidth required to produce an snr of 1 so it is just thermal noise operated uh, a limited system so snr is so to be able to get an snr of 1 what is the optical power that you need to put into the detector okay so if uh, i know the nep is a certain power it is quantified in terms of certain nanowatts or picowatts depending on the detector it means that if my nep is let's say 100 nanowatt it means that if i put in 100 nanowatt into the system the signal to noise ratio is going to be 1 signal power is equal to noise power uh, in db it becomes 0 db so if i want to have a higher signal to noise ratio i can now say how much power should fall on the detector let's say my requirement is 20 db 
then I can calculate that if the power required for SNR is 1 is this much, I can calculate how much is the power required for an SNR of 20. So, that is again a quick calculation. So, some of the data sheets actually give noise equivalent power rather than specifying the uh, you know load resistance and temperature and things like that. They generally say NEP at room temperature. right? And remember this is uh, for thermal noise limited systems, right? this is not for short noise limited system. They some of the receivers also uh, you know define something called as detectivity which is inverse of NEP. They will say 1 by or some, some number raised to you know in, in uh, what inverse. These are different data sheet numbers. So, when you are trying to build the system you are looking at different data sheets to figure out which detector should I use. You may come across these numbers and you can you can interpret this way. Okay. So, uh, we talked about now uh, there was a question uh, I mean I asked you to solve I am assuming that you would have solved this. Uh, we will move on. Uh, what happens to the APD receivers now? Uh, we talked about PD receivers. So, how do you calculate uh, uh, noise SNR for a PD receiver? You say signal power divided by the total uh, noise power. APD what happens? Uh, what is the difference between a regular pin diode and an APD? You have multiplication, you have an electronic multiplication which is an avalanche multiplication. So, you have to apply a reverse voltage such that the system goes into or you are creating a high electric field in the uh, uh, detector itself which will create impact ionization and avalanche multiplication. So, your, uh, your current is equal to it is not just R d times P in, it is R d times P in times there is a multiplication factor m, right? That is a photo current. So, how do I modify my SNR uh, equation? I just say that this is my m times R d times P in square, which is my signal power divided by. Now, in noise power, you have thermal noise which is similar to what you have 4 k t by r times what is f n? Noise figure of the electrical amplifier or electronic amplifier that you are using in the system. This noise figure should be in uh, should not be used in dB, it should be used as a uh, absolute number. Okay? And if you do not have that electronic amplifier, I should put f n is equal to 1, there is no degradation in noise figure. But in short noise, you will have I mean again I am not deriving this. Uh, if you did not have a uh, APD operation, operation multiplication factor you would have 2 q times R d p in plus I dark. Okay. But when you are trying to include the uh, short noise in an APD you have a m square factor and a F a factor. Uh, you would have expected it is m times r d p in, but it is actually m square times r d p in. The reason being when you do impact ionization, you are not only creating electrons, you are also creating holes. So, the noise when you are accounting for the noise, electron current gives you the, uh, the, the flow of electrons give you the current. right? So, that is where you have a multiplication m here, but as far as the noise is concerned both the electrons and the holes are creating noise. That is why you have a m square factor there and there is an additional uh, noise, noise figure of your APD. This is uh, f amplifier because the APD itself is now acting like an amplifier. right? So, there is an additional noise figure and this noise, this f a is in turn uh, dependent on uh, m. Right, depending on how this dopant concentration is uh, for a given APD, what is the material used and so on. So, this is again you can characterize once you make an APD you can characterize the APD and figure out what is the uh, noise figure. For instance, uh, in one of the problems in the assignment uh, there is an F a which is given to be m raised to 0.23 or something like that or 0.35 or something like that. How do you get that? I mean it is only through characterization, there is no specific uh, derivation possible of course, may be uh, empirically one can uh, derive that. But the question is uh, you know would the SNR of APD be better than pin diode? Is this number 
you know so you know the modifications. So, with these modifications is the SNR going to be better for APD or is it not going to be better for APD. I know my the signal power became better because it be increased by m times, but in terms of signal to noise ratio is there an improvement. Again you can analyze it when it is thermal noise limited and when it is short noise limited. I will have to calculate. So, how do you know whether the system is short noise limited or thermal noise limited? For instance, if I yeah it is based on the power. So, what should I do? I should actually plot noise variance on the y axis with input power. How would thermal noise look like? If I plot thermal noise which is uh, you know sigma square of thermal noise versus uh, input power, how is that graph going to look like? That is going to be a constant. So, I will have a certain constant number. How is the short noise variance going to look like? Your short noise variance suppose let us take the case of a pinned diode right. So, your short noise variance is what sigma s square is equal to 2 q times R d times uh, p in right plus dark current and let us say I am assuming that the dark current is very very negligibly small you can even take dark current does not matter uh, times the bandwidth. So, for the base same bandwidth if I plot how is this going to look like? For very low uh, powers the short noise is going to be low it is it is linearly increasing with uh, p n right. So, I will get something like this. So, which is the short noise limited regime and which is the thermal noise limited regime? Of course, when I uh, find I can find out the input power for which the short noise and thermal noise are identical and if I go much larger than this I have this is my short noise limited operation. So, that is decided by my input power and this is my this region is my thermal noise limited operation. Now, whether this line is here or whether the line is uh, you know going up this line is going up or going down the thermal noise line location or the y axis corresponding to thermal noise is decided by what? It is just decided by your R L once you have a fixed temperature once you have a bandwidth. So, you have the freedom to keep moving your uh, that line subject of course, when you are changing R L your bandwidth is changing. So, you have to you have to uh, carefully change you cannot just arbitrarily increase your R L to bring your thermal noise down because as you increase your R L your R C time constant is uh, increasing. So, that reduces the bandwidth of the system. So, you may need a certain R L to uh, respect the bandwidth of the system for that it is fixed. Whereas, short noise is something that you can control with input power. But again what is the constraint in a communication system? You may not have a lot of power at the receiver you do not have this p n is your optical power you may not have a lot of optical power at the receiver. So, if you wish to operate in the short noise dominated regime or short noise limited regime or thermal noise limited regime the only uh, parameter that you can play around is power and that is something that I am saying that in a link you do not want a lot of power at the receiver you want you want to extend your link. So, the power of the receiver is going to be small. So, it is tricky. So, so we are going to figure out a way how to get over that problem, but before that let us answer this question would the SNR of the APD be better than that of pin. So, what happens in a, a thermal noise limited system? Uh, is it going to be better? Yes, by, a, by what factor? m square. So, in this regime of operation it is going to be definitely better. But what happens in the short noise limited regime? Is it going to be better or worser? m square cancels out, but I have an extra f a in the denominator. Now, f a is a number larger than 1 it is a noise figure. So, my s n r actually drops. So, in the thermal noise limit s n r improves by m square in the short noise limit s n r 
is degraded by F A. So, you have to be very careful while using your A P D. You cannot be using A P D unless it is absolutely necessary for you. Because in the short loss limit actually the SNR degrades 